Welcome to Multifamily Live. I'm Tim Yarusi. And I'm Jason Yarusi. Our mission is to help you unlock your full potential as a multifamily real estate investor. So you can do more deals, bigger deals, with less stress, keep more profit, and free up your time. Multifamily doesn't have to be a mystery. It's time to go live. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. I am so excited to introduce you to this new guest. She is my friend. She is my partner, Alessandra Thompson. Welcome, Alessandra. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here and so so happy to see your face. (laughs) Yay, so happy to have you and so excited to have you on. So everyone, Alessandra Thompson is a 25-year-old, yes, I said 25-year-old real estate investor and large multifamily underwriter. From her experience in selling solar panels door-to-door to being a senior manager of operations at a tech and marketing startup, she quickly realized that she needed to take Take control of her freedom. She just recently closed on her first deal, yay, a 36-unit multifamily property in Little Rock, Arkansas, and her mission is to continue to scale her portfolio. The words she lives by are, success lies on the other side of fear, and truly believe that life begins when we step outside of our comfort zones. So welcome to the show, Alessandra. Thank you so much for having me. Yay, so let's start at the beginning. How did you decide to get into real estate? You've done so much. You've sold solar panels. You were a senior manager of a startup. So what was the moment? What was the big aha moment for you to get into real estate? So I think for me, I've always wanted to be that person that's like not in an office all day. So I started to just kind of look at different outcomes for my life of where I could be. And I always found out like, like I looked into index funds and I looked into selling things and doing all these things and real estate kind of just clicked. But when I found out that it clicked, I didn't really take any action on it. So it wasn't really until COVID started, like I started listening to podcasts here and there. And then um, I was really just able to kind of get in touch with my own self of like, I'm completely by myself living in a house because I am forced not to see anyone due to the restrictions. And I think it was really good for me because I was able to just sit down and be like, what is it that I want? And I kind of cleared my head. I got in good men- like mental and physical shape. And then one summer, I this last summer, I went and visited my brother in Florida who was selling solar panels door to door. And I ended up just staying there for the whole summer. And I started to do the door to door sales with him, which was super fun and very brutal at the same time. But I um, was working both of my jobs and I just really liked the hustle of it, like the always on the go and just kind of hitting my goals. Like I was in the best headspace that I could have ever been in. And then it wasn't until like after the summer that I moved back home to Los Angeles and felt really empty. And like, what am I supposed to do next? Like I want to keep growing my potential. And then I also had come into a lot of money. And so I was like, okay, I can finally do the traditional route. I can buy a single family home and just put a down payment down. And obviously I couldn't do that in Los Angeles. So my brother was living in Utah. That's where he went to school. And so I just decided to move there. And I was like, okay, I can purchase like a single or like a duplex here and start renting out the other room. But then I was like, that is going to get rid of all my capital. I don't know if that's scalable. And I I just feel like I'm still going to be doing the nine to five job that it's not that it was a bad thing. It's just not for me. And so I started looking into flipping. I was like, that seems like a lot too. So I also at the same time was on Clubhouse like religiously all the time and just kind of getting my name out there, stepping up on the, the Clubhouse stage as we call it and just saying, here's who I am, here's what I wanna do. And when I started like diving deeper into multifamily, everything just sort of clicked for me. I feel like I have more of like an analytical mind. And so I love looking at the numbers. I love the spreadsheets, I love underwriting. And then I just kind of kept seeing a lot of the similar faces and especially you, I would always just kind of follow you into different rooms and just make sure that I could hear you speaking. You and Jason are geniuses. And so I finally was able to like book a Calendly session with you, which took about three weeks to get into your calendar, but I waited and I was excited. And you had told me that if I was ever in Nashville to just let you know. And so in my brain, I was like, that sounded like she just invited me to Nashville And so I drove from Utah down to Los Angeles, packed my little Jetta up, drove four days over to Nashville, got an apartment, and then I met you. 
and we just kind of sat down together and you told me that your assistant had to move back home and I just couldn't I'm shocked at the timing of it but also it was it's been really challenging but also the best decision I've ever made and for me I just feel like I also lost my dad three years ago so I he actually worked until the day he died at 71 and that's never been something that I want to have for myself or for my children to be away from I don't have children but you know it's one day and then <laughs> so I've just wanted to kind of take live life on my own terms. And that for me is like geographical time and financial freedom to do what I want when I want to. And that, yeah, I can't sit in an office all day. That's my story. (laughs) I love it. There's so much to unpack there, Alessandra. I mean, let's, let's go back to what you said. You said you jumped in, you got into clubhouse. Let's go with that. And you started realizing and getting into real estate rooms and getting into multifamily rooms and introducing yourself to people and getting people to know you. And I remember when we had our first phone call and I remember, oh, no, I'm going to take it back to when we just started talking on Clubhouse. I remember anytime I would see your face hop into a room, I'd be like, invite, invite to speak, invite to speak, invite to speak, because you had so much drive and potential and need to learn that I would it was like refreshing to share the space with you so thank you for reaching out and thank you for being a part of our family so let's go from clubhouse and let's pinpoint the fact that you reached out that you made it a point that you heard what I was saying I was saying if you are ever in Nashville please come and take a look at what we're doing, take a look at what we're doing and come and meet me. Let's sit down and talk. And what you said about, it it felt like, and we've talked about this before, and maybe you can dive into a little bit more. Like when I told you, you know what, our assistant just like had to go back home. So the position's open if you want it. What went through your mind when we told you that? Well, I first of all, I just got the chills because I still, I'm in shock. I have to pinch myself that this is the reality now. But what was going through my mind was mostly, besides the excitement, was more like, what did I just do? Um, Where am I? I've never been here before. But I think that being able to take those risks and get out of your comfort zone is something that's necessary because I don't want to look back and be like, why didn't I do more and why I I know that I can and it's almost going to be too late for me if I don't start it's never too late of course it's never too late but for me I'm always a kind of person like what's next what else is there I want to know I want to keep going and so um, just stepping out of my comfort zone and I was overwhelmed definitely at first just all of the information being thrown at me but at the same time I think taking, understanding that it takes time, it takes a lot of knowledge and patience and just understanding what you're doing without trying to get ahead of it. It's like a, it's a long game. And I think that, I think that everyone just needs to take action and get started with it, honestly. Well, the great thing is, and even your mission and your, the words that you live by, success lies on the other side of fear. Like if you had been too afraid to reach out, if you had been too afraid to pack your Jetta and move to Nashville, like you would have deprived us of somebody that has helped our business scale to where it is today. And you quickly moved from someone that came here to help us to now our head underwriter. So how was that process for you? And let's, you know what, I'll save my second question for after you tell us about that process. The process for me, and honestly, it was a lot of fear because I didn't want to make the mistakes. I wanted to be like, oh, I know what I'm doing. I know this, but it took a lot of like vulnerability to just be like, hey, I have no idea what's going on and that's okay because I will learn. We all have to learn something from the beginning to start with. And we'll like, again, it takes time to learn something, but I just soaked up the knowledge. I asked questions. I think that that's one of the main things is that I used to be really afraid of asking questions because I didn't want to sound stupid, but at the end of the day, that kind of just comes to bite you at the end because then you really don't know what's going on versus just not going what's going on right in the second that you asked it. So that was vital for me. And just knowing that 
like I think having a mentor and having someone to work with that will teach you the ropes is the most vital piece of my success here just because I don't think I could have done it alone it's not a alone a single person's game it's a team sport it's a team building thing and you guys have just really welcomed me in and I, I can I'm forever grateful so uh we are forever grateful <laughs> and I want to pinpoint some of the things you said about being it being a team sport and the thing is yes we were able to mentor you and give you the information that we have and the processes that we have but the thing is you gave us our time back that's why we were able to give you the information that we have because you allowed us to take the steps that we needed to pull the business forward. And also you allowed us because you helped us take down this, your first deal, a 36 unit multifamily property in Little Rock, Arkansas. How did that feel? Like how, like walk us, in fact, walk us through the process if you can from the beginning of the deal to closing. Yeah, so first of all, I feel like a huge imposter at times, but now I'm just like, this is my baby. This is my deal. <laughs> I'm yes. like telling my mom, like don't, I have an apartment building. Oh uh, no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so, but you do, you do. Yeah, I do. It's like anything we could, maybe we could have taken it down without you. Maybe we could have taken it down without our partners because we're also, this is also a, a deal that we took down with another partner, Andy uh, McFarlane. And he's a great friend of mine, ours. Could we have done it without him? Sure, maybe. But would it be the property that it is today? Maybe not. And maybe we couldn't have. We don't know because you were such a key part of this of this acquisition that I don't know. I don't know if it could have been done without you. Mm -hmm. So let us know. Let's yeah. let's let the listeners know about this property from start to finish. How did it go for you? It, okay, so we got the deal through a banker relationship or broker relationship. Um, he actually grew up in the area and he just kind of had like a really good idea on the place. It's right in the Hillcrest neighborhood of Little Rock, Arkansas, and it's 36 units and it has a very historical feel. It's right off the downtown main street and there's a huge loss to lease in the property. So the units were renting at an average around 650 and we're able to bring that up to a 950 to 975 while billing back on the tenants for water and pest. Um, 19 of the 36 units were um, month to month. And so that is kind of a good thing to kind of clean up the tenant base, but also start implementing the business plan of just getting in there, starting the renovations and leasing the units up at the market rate. We already have one going out at it right now. Four of them are being worked on as we speak. It's been a challenge. Um, there were a few operational inefficiencies, management issues, it's just kind of a lot of things being swept under the rug or just not being in full, being fully cared for. Um, some of the things is that we underwrote it and financed it through a local bank just because it was under vacancy. So we went with a bridge loan and we found out that Arkansas actually has the, big, the biggest density of banks of any state in America. Yes. Um, yes, which I thought was fascinating. And then we also faced like a few challenges. So towards the closing, we actually found out that there was a huge mold like removal issue that we need to get rid of because there's a stream that's running underneath the building. And so that kind of pushed back our timeline for closing because we just needed to make sure that the seller was gonna give us a credit for it. We also had some inaccuracies with the HUD statement. So we were just pushing back the timeline there more and more, but we got it closed and we've already started implementing the business plan. So we are starting to lease out the unit. Like I said, we already replaced the property management company. We're adding like a new signage to make it a more modern historic feel. We are implementing an energy efficiency program. So um, huge savings just to do the AC tune-ups, smart ther thermostats, uh, insulation, and we're putting in new contracts for laundry, utility solutions, and there's a lot happening. We're also qualified for a tax credit, which is really interesting. I didn't know much about. And yeah, there's just a lot happening and I love it. 
<laughs> that is amazing. Uh, you mentioned and kind of glossed over some of the challenges. So what are some of the challenges for you with this property? Personally, like I'm in unknown territory. I'm in something that I... I, I don't immediately know off the bat the buckling of the floor or what goes into the mold remediation of putting in a vapor barrier and speaking to contractors and having them take me seriously as this young girl on the other side of the phone of just woman. Yeah, woman. Yes. And I'm just, it's a, it's again, it's the fear thing. But once mm -hmm. I face that fear and I make, even if I make that mistake, I'm learning from that mistake, but I'm also facing this now is just going to make me better later on. So it's been probably that's the most challenging part for me, but now I can probably tell you all about it. And um, yeah, I think just a lot of, it's overwhelming, but having a structure put in place of like, this is what you need, being able to bounce off questions to you and Jason has just been also pretty vital to my success. So it, it's been challenging, but rewarding. So rewarding. <laughs> Well, thank you. And the thing is, you and the strength that you have within you is what is going to drive you through the progression that you're going to have this massive growth that you've had. And we didn't even tell the listeners this. When, when did you first walk into our offices, which is basically our home? Which you're part of our... <laughs> March that? 8th. March Go ahead. 8th. March 8th. March 8th, 2021. This is just a few months ago, folks. So you've had exponential growth in this time. And yes, you might say, oh, maybe Alessandra got there because she, she's with you and Jason, with Peely and Jason. Maybe, maybe you could have done it on your own. We don't know. But the thing is, the thing that I want my listeners to take away from this is that Alessandra took the steps that was needed. The things that everyone, everyone on podcasts that speak and that let their knowledge be known. Everyone says, get a mentor. Everyone says, follow in the footsteps of those that has, have done it before you. If, you. if you really, really want to have a seat at the table, then go get a seat at the table. And that's exactly what you did, Alessandra. And that was your power. That was you, that wasn't me, that wasn't Jason. That was you. That was you taking the steps to get invited to talk on on clubhouse to get invited to talk and these were i mean these were massive discussions i remember i we were i remember we were all in a discussion with brad cardone once with alvin johnson with all these like huge names in real estate because you simply had the power to raise your hand and say i am here i want to be heard so this is all you this is your journey this is, this is your power. And I, I am so, I am honored to be a part of this journey. So I'm going to put it back on you now as a 25 year old woman, how do you, where do you see this going? And how do you see yourself as sort of a light for other young women out there who want to get into real estate or really anything that they want to set their, set their minds to? I think that it starts with honestly believing in yourself is I think the biggest thing because I I struggle with that a lot of like the imposter syndrome or I can't do it but it's not I can't do it it's how can I do it and leaning on other people not leaning on them so much but like having those conversations I had so many phone calls I just told them what I was doing I had no idea what I was saying and you don't need to know everything to get started you just need to have the willingness to learn whatever that is that you want to do. And I think that just taking that action, pushing yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone is going to bring you the most success and just kind of keep having those relationships and keep going. And don't give up because I want to sometimes and I don't. <laughs> and having those people there, like surrounding yourself with the best people. Like it wasn't only you surrounding yourself with us. It was us surrounding yourself ourselves or even myself with you, because there's so many times I'm so like happy when you like walk into the door, because I'm just like, I, I feel relief. 
I feel relief because now Alessandra's here, everything will have a little bit more structure, everything will be a little bit more just at ease, and you do bring a light into the room, which I hope and pray that you share with everyone, and this podcast is just the beginning. So everyone, this is Alessandra's first podcast, yes. so <laughs> welcome to podcasting, Alessandra. Um, I hope to have you on again, but before I leave you and let you go, two things. How can people reach you if they want to get a hold of you? Yeah, so you can reach me at my email at alice at A-L-E-S-S at authenticacquisition.com. You can find me on LinkedIn at Alessandra Thompson. I know my name's a little bit challenging, but you will find me. (laughs) Um, And yeah, feel free to send me an email. I'd love to respond. (laughs) And I will leave that all in the links uh, in the show notes below, all the links in the show notes below. And again, before I let you go, what's one last light words of wisdom that you can leave with our listeners today? Wow, that's a tough one. Um, I have so many and now I'm put on the spot. (laughs) I would just say um, really believe in yourself and believe in what you're like, you are capable of doing anything that you put your mind to. I really do believe it. That's true. Because sometimes I don't, it took me a while to understand that. Like once you, it's a compound effect almost that once you start achieving the smallest things, you can scale and you really can put, do anything you put your mind to, even if you don't have as much knowledge as you think you do. So you really can put your mind into doing anything 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 so from my heart to yours to my listeners i am super grateful to you for listening to our podcast today if you liked what you heard please rate review subscribe and by all means please 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 reach out to alessandra if you have any information or if you have any questions for her please do and alessandra thank you so very much for being on the show today i am super honored to be your friend to be on this amazing journey with you. So much aloha. Thank you so much, Feely. Thank you.